Hey, this is Elijah with the Oxygen Team. And in this video, we're gonna be creating this fancy flip box effect in Oxygen. Now, if you're like me, you've seen this other places and you always kind of wondered how in the world it was done. The surprising part about this is you don't need JavaScript or anything else like that. It's all accomplished with CSS. So let's jump into our WordPress install here and we'll go ahead and get started on a blank Oxygen page. All right, so I'm gonna set up a basic structure here. So I'm gonna add a section and I'll add uh, three columns here because I'm gonna go ahead and just create three flip boxes. And within this leftmost column is where we'll set up our first flip box. So we need a div and we're gonna add a class to this like flip box. And then we need another div and this is gonna be flip box underscore underscore front. And then we're gonna add another div that's gonna have the class flip box underscore underscore back, but we're not gonna do that yet. We're gonna do that after we've styled this front one. So let's just style these up a little bit. So the actual flip box container here is gonna have a width of 100%. And then that's about all we care about on that one for now. Then let's go to the flip box front div and let's set it to 100% width as well. And let's give these a min height of like, I don't know, 400 pixels. And then let's give it some padding, 32 pixels all the way around. And let's just go ahead and stack everything vertically, center, and center. Perfect. Now to make these look really cool, I like to use nice looking pictures in the background. So we're going to go to advanced background and we're going to choose a background image. And actually, in my case, I have a few I've uh, downloaded from pexels.com. So I'm going to drop those in. And we'll just pick one for this first flip box. Make sure the background size is set to cover so that it fits in there nicely. We can also center it here. Uh, the left position probably won't do much, but the top position sometimes, if you set these to 50%, that'll give you that centered background image. Now let's just add some basic content here so that we can at least see what's going on. Change that text color to white. We're gonna say flip box one. Let's add an icon. Now, if you wanted the content to have the same styles in all three flip boxes, you would also want to add classes to these items that we're adding inside. But in my case, I might, you know, eventually end up adding unique content to each one. So the classes really don't matter as much. So let's find an icon here that looks like, there we go. How about that? That looks like it might indicate something flipping around. And then let's add some text. And we'll say hover over me to see the effect. And then set that to white as well. And then this icon, um, we will add, we'll go to advanced size and spacing. And we'll add some margin on the top and bottom to space everything out a bit. And then our white text is kind of blending into the background in some spots. So I'm going to choose the flip box front div. And I'm going to go ahead and go to advanced background and add an overlay color to that. We can go uh, with a dark color and just darken that background up a bit. Now that looks pretty decent. The next thing we need to do is to make the backside of our flip box. So we're gonna just duplicate this so we have all this content in here already. And uh, instead of a background image on this one, I'm gonna set it to a solid color, but first we need to make uh, the flip box underscore underscore back class. So we'll go ahead and add that in, flip box underscore underscore back. And then the reason we did this after designing the front is because now we can just copy our styles from the front, click copy, copy it to the back class, and then we can delete the front class off of this back one so that we didn't have to style that up twice. Now we'll say this is, is the back on that heading there. And then we're gonna replace this text probably with a button. So let's add a link, link wrapper and we're gonna drop this text into there and then style up the link wrapper a bit. Actually, let's go ahead and change the text. Click me. And then now we'll style up the link wrapper. So advanced, size and spacing. Let's add eight pixels of padding on the top and bottom and 32 on the left and right. 
and then let's just give it a basic border here. So we'll go to borders and pick white, one pixel solid. So now we have our front and our back. Now what we need to do is implement the flip box effect, which again is done all via CSS. So for that, we're gonna fire up a new style sheet. So we'll go to manage, style sheets, add style sheet, and we'll just call this flip box. Now what I like to do when I'm working on something where I'm handwriting a lot of CSS is I like to go ahead and lay out my class names so that I know kind of the, uh, the structure I'm working with. So our first class was called Flipbox. We don't write any uh, declarations here yet. We're just writing in the selectors. Then we have Flipbox underscore underscore front. And then we have Flipbox underscore underscore back. Great. And so those are the three classes that we made and the ones that we'll be working with for the most part. All right. So now we get to go ahead and start writing the CSS that makes this whole thing work. So the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure that my front and back flip box elements have a transition and something called back face visibility. What that does, the back face visibility property, allows you to define that when we flip everything around, it's not gonna be visible. That way we don't have weird overlaps. And you'll see what that uh, effect is. So we're just gonna write a rule here for flip box front and flip box back because we need the same rules or properties on both of them. So we're gonna go ahead and establish a transition. So transition, 0.3 actually for this I normally do 0.3 so that's kind of a habit but for this we want it to be a little bit longer so 0.7 seconds all ease in out that ensures that when it does flip around it's a nice slow transition and then we need that back face visibility property here and that is going to be set to hidden now note that in order for this to work in Safari, you'll also need to add that backface dash visibility property with the dash webkit prefix. So that's one part of the uh, secret sauce for making these flip boxes work. Now we need to add some styles to just the, uh, the front flip box. So I'm just gonna move this down just for the sake of organization. And we're gonna set the front one to uh, transform rotate Y zero degrees because we don't want it to be flipped initially. And then we also need to add transform style dash style preserve dash 3D. And then we're gonna need very similar styles for the back except for the back one's gonna be positioned absolutely so that they're all kind of layered on top of each other. So flip box underscore back. We're gonna do position absolute transform, rotate Y 180 degrees because we want that to be rotated by default and then transform style preserve 3D, same as we had for the front one. Now, because we don't want this to be all flipped around and goofy in the builder, we actually need to add another bit to this selector, which is gonna be body colon not ng dash scope for a class there. So basically when you're in the oxygen builder, the body element has a class of ng dash scope. So if we tell it to only apply this when the body doesn't have that class, then we aren't all silly in the builder while we're trying to actually manipulate content. The other thing we need to do for our absolute positioning to work is we need to uh, set the flip box itself to position relative, which we can do in the oxygen GUI, but since I'm in the style sheet already, I'm just gonna do it here, so position relative. And it might help if I spelled absolute properly. Perfect, so now if we jump to the front end, you should see that these are all kind of layered on top of each other. And that obviously doesn't work yet because we haven't put everything in, but you can see our absolute positioning is working on the front end. But in the back end, we're still able to see both the front and the back and kind of deal with that. Now we're gonna add our hover style. So again, we're gonna use this body not trick to make sure these don't uh, fire when we're in the builder, just because it really makes it impossible to manipulate these elements if they're always flipping around on you when you're trying to click uh, things inside them. So this is gonna be flip box, 
which is, uh, remember, the parent uh, container for both the front and the back. And we're going to make sure when that container is hovered, then the flip box front is going to go and transform, rotate Y. We're going to flip it kind of to the left, negative 180 degrees. Okay. And then we need a similar rule for the back one. So let's try body, not ng scope, flip box, hover, flip box, underscore back. And this one, since it's already rotated 180 degrees by default, is going to be uh, transform, rotate, y, zero degrees. Let's see if we got that right on the first try here. So we can see, yeah, we are now um, seeing the flipping action that we expected. But there's still a few things to work out on this. Oh, and probably part of the reason this isn't looking quite so good is because I had a period instead of a comma there. So let's just test that out on the front end. And that gives us more of the effect that we expected. It's almost always when something's not working, just remember to go back and look for the silliest mistakes possible. And that's usually going to be uh, what is holding something up. So now we have this flip box effect, which is pretty close to done. But one thing these flip boxes have is this really cool 3D perspective effect on the elements that are inside the flipping containers. So the way we do that is we're going to go back here and write another CSS rule. And that's going to be for all the elements inside the front and the back containers. So we're going to do flip box underscore underscore front star, which is a wild card that represents anything that's a child of that container. And we're going to do the same thing for the back. So flip box underscore underscore back star. And then let's write some declarations here. So we're going to set it to uh, transform translate Z 60 pixels. Okay, this is going to bring it up in the Z depth so that when it does rotate, you're going to see that there's some 3D space behind these elements. And then we want that back face visibility here to be hidden as well. So let's save that and jump up to the front and just see the difference. So now you can see that as it rotates off, those elements almost look like they're raised up off of that background, which is just a really, really impressive effect. Now, just to add some uh, differentiation on this back uh, part of this card, I'm going to change the background from an image to just a color. So we're going to clear these and then we're going to set it to uh, maybe a black. Perfect. So now we can just uh, duplicate our flip box element however many times we want and just drop them into these columns. And we've got a really, really cool section that we can use to represent whatever we want. These could be features. They could be anything where you have an initial piece of information you want visible, but you want to reveal some more things when you hover over them. So again, this is Elijah with the Oxygen team, and that's how to create a really simple and really cool flip box effect with Oxygen and a little bit of custom CSS. Thank you very much for watching.